starting lineup. So the mean green are healthy, which they really were not for the whole conference season. They are a dangerous team. FAU knows it. The tip is won by Golden and John L. Davis, the league's co-player of the year, controlling for the Florida Atlantic Owls. Winners of three straight, 14 and four in the league, and getting their first taste of the American Conference Tournament. North Texas is dangerous, but they're also incredibly tough, and I think that's what separates them from most teams in the country. But I would say that's kind of the identity of the entire American Athletic Conference. Just tough, competitive games. We've had it all season. I expect more tonight. Edwards, a big scorer for North Texas. Jones and Scott, their leaders. Bugs, a terrific shooter. And Sissoko, a terrific rebounder. And John Bugs, the best three-point shooter in the league, rattles his first look out. Here's a starting five for FAU. It's guard heavy. Davis and Martin are all conference players. Gaffney, a terrific point guard with Weatherspoon, the shooter. And Golden, who has been a dominant force down the stretch. Saw a glimpse of Dusty May right before tip. One of the hottest names in coaching, but we have talked to Dusty May quite a bit this year, and he loves where he's at at Boca he Raton. He's very happy. They've been building something special. Doesn't mean he'll be there forever. Who knows? But he's happy now. The program is in great shape, and Dusty May is one of the great people you can yep. be around in college basketball. Look, the reality is every time someone else gets fired from a Power 5 job, Dusty May's name is going to get brought up, and that's just a compliment. Jalen Gaffney's pass deflected by Edwards, who tries to save it out of bounds and stays with FAU with six to shoot. Ross Hyde's a defensive-minded head coach at North Texas. Great career as a Juco coach. Right-hand man for Grant McCaslin for six years. Why can they go ahead and make a run in this thing? They play deliberate. They play with a confident style. They're very good shooters. And finally, John, after an injury-riddled conference season, they've got their top nine of the rotation. As Jalen Gaffney's three opens the scoring for FAU. A good start defensively for North Texas, really taking out that drive to the basket. They've collapsed hard on the basketball, but they've closed well on shooters. FAU may have to make some perimeter shots to soften this defense up a bit. Jason Edwards, third best score in the league at 19 a game. They're at number two for the Mean Green. Here is Scott back on the floor today. Scott trying to dribble right through the double. Scott puts it on the rim and drops it home. Aaron Scott, 11 point per game score with the first two for North Texas. That's just a tough matchup. But you do a good job digging down to try to get the ball out of there. But the reality is you've got to commit to get him to pick the ball up. So the top scoring offense in the league against the top scoring defense. Weatherspoon breaks a three. The rebound down to Reuben Jones. Their do-it-all senior point guard. Jones off of Sissoko's screen. And a switch with Golden back for Bugs. Jones will shoot it over Golden and rattle a three-pointer out. Rebound tipped by Davis to Weatherspoon. Inside Golden had a height advantage. Weatherspoon's pass was not on the mark. And a takeaway for Edwards in North Texas. Edwards draws the bump. And he'll draw a couple of free throws. This is what happened yesterday. Aaron Scott played nine minutes in the first half, was ready to check in and watch him spotlight in the top right of your screen. Ooh. He's told to go down at the scores table, and all of a sudden said he felt some severe abdominal pain. He was with his family in the tunnel, tried to get back in the game, but as Ross Hodge said, look, the decision was taken out of his hands. He went to the hospital in an ambulance, was checked out for some sort of abdominal issue, and was cleared. So he is back in there today, and we're told that Aaron feels just fine. There are a lot of weird things, and as someone who's kind of had way too much experience with uh, these these things, internal issues, it, what, diverticulitis, you get concerned with that. Uh, he was checked out and cleared. You know, gastritis is something that could be incredibly painful and then all of a sudden go away and you're fine. Uh, so, number of different things. Just good to see him on the floor. Good to see him healthy. Because that's a scary situation. C.J. Nolan's on the floor along with Robert Allen for the first time for North Texas. Davis spinning in the lane and the co-player of the year in the American. John L. Davis has his first points. Do you remember when Dusty May said, said to us about, maybe it wasn't you, but all you play-by-play -play guys are alike. Thank you. Um, he said, John L. Davis never really stops. It just flows. It flows into a shot. It flows into his pass. It's almost as if the ball and his movement never really stops. He's so hard to figure out. Inside, there's Nolan. His shot cleaned up by Allen, and Allen's shot swatted away. Shot clock is not reset. 
And it will go to FAU. I do remember that, by the way. I you was do. You were there. Yeah, it was you one fluid motion. It's like the way he dribbles, gathers, and shoots. It's all in one smooth motion for John Aldis. I mean, it's really, I mean, it's fluid. It's kind of somewhat rhythmic. I, it, the game is a dance for John L. Davis, and, and really that's the best basketball. We say the best basketball is jazz, right? It, it doesn't mean it's all about one guy or the other. It's about feel. Who's got it? Are you playing to that? Can you shift the feel of the game, kind of right, the, the tempo of the game at times? Can you disrupt at times? I mean, it's all a dance. Look, fighters train with the classical music. It's about developing fluidity and relaxation in all that moment. But basketball is jazz, and when you find it, man, it's pretty. Golden is isolated right now. 7-1 junior Golden with a miss. Got his miss back and finished. So, you remember, we did the Memphis game. I do remember that. You the, were there. The game at Memphis. The game at Memphis. So, we did that game, and there was such a concerted effort to get the ball inside to Golden. The problem was it slowed them down, and it disrupted their own rhythm. So, I want to see if they can get Golden the ball without disrupting their own rhythm and flow on the offensive end. You feel like that changed the second time they played Memphis in the win at their place? Yeah, they got to score. They didn't sacrifice rhythm to get him involved. I think he's got to find a way to get involved in the process. Davis with an uncharacteristically inattentive pitch back, and Edwards was challenged by Golden out of bounds off of North Texas. A three-point lead for FAU in the opening segment, the third meeting between these teams. The hype was all about Memphis and FAU. Memphis was a top 10 team. Had that stayed throughout and you had FAU and Memphis all in the top 25 throughout, there'd probably be more national attention on the conference. But the reality is Memphis fell apart. They struggled. They really stopped being a winning team. And now, yeah, it's FAU, but you cannot discredit what South Florida has done this year. Golden in traffic. No, that's out of bounds, and it will stay with FAU. And look, the, the story of the American this season has been the close games. Everybody's been tight with everybody. Yeah. You know, a lot of teams in the net top 150. Again, only FAU has the metrics to be an at-large team, but here's Temple in 11 seed playing tonight. Wichita State, a 12 team that beat Memphis. I mean, we saw name any team against any team just about. Any matchup was capable of being an upset this year. The American had as many close games as any conference in Division One. End of the shot clock. Oh, Martin through the iron and the ball right to Davis for an uncontested offensive rebound. Brian Greenlee's on the floor for the first time for FAU. Senior point guard. Martin. Weatherspoon. And FAU not hitting from the outside as Allen finally corrals the loose ball. I think the defense from North Texas has been good. Their closeouts are really strong, but they're under control, right? They're balanced on those closeouts and not getting beat on that second driving kick opportunity. That's the thing. The driving kick, that first driving kick, rarely is it getting you a shot. It's setting up the next driving kick, which often gets you the shot. North Texas, five straight misses, and Edwards has it knocked away by Elijah Martin, and Brian Greenlee collects the takeaway. Golden slow to get back in the play. Greenlee coming off a Season high 21 on senior day and a 92 84 win over Memphis Saturday. Martin on the physical drive, and Martin will get two with a chance for one more. And I think that's really the recipe where if you have the space on this side, you look, there's room on the side of the floor. I mean, ultimately, on the drive, the defender, I believe it was Bugs, the defender actually goes out to defend the three. They're not going to overhelp off the three-point shooter. So if you have room on the floor where there's not somebody occupying the block, the physical drive might be the way to go. And if you can kind of get some fouls called, take some of that aggressiveness away from North Texas, you can start to control what you do on the offensive end. But I like for North Texas, if you play physical early, get a sense of how it's going to be called. Because if you can use physicality to slow FAU down, it would be a great advantage. Three-point play for Martin, a second-team all-conference pick. And he'll take Look, a seat for Brennan Lorian. I say that given the physicality we saw earlier today. I mean, those two games, they, they were tough, man. They're letting these guys play. They're going to let a championship be, term, be determined by the guys on the floor. But I think it, that would be an advantage for North Texas if they could turn this into a physical grind. Good hands there by Greenlee, trying to knock it away from C.J. Nolan. Jones deep in the shot clock against the substitute, Nick Boyd. 
Lefty on lefty. Boyd keeps his feet down, forces Jones into an air ball. Right now, it's FAU defending like North Texas. What did they say? Like, that defensive possession, I, mean, I just sat there, didn't really say a word, just watched. Their balance defense balances everything on the defensive end. Don't get leaning, don't get lunging, don't get jumping. Balances everything. FAU looked like North Texas. I think you're right. That's the right point to make. And that has been their Achilles heel this year. They really struggle to defend at times. Chuck Carlo Rosado in the game for Golda. His miss is cleaned up by Laurian. And a timeout's taken by Ross Hodge. A 9 0 run for Florida Atlantic, which leads by eight early in the quarters. Back at 30. That FAU plays, it almost gives you opportunities as a role player to find and establish and maintain a role, right? You know you're going to get opportunities. There are holes that need to be filled in different rotations. And Lorian's one of those guys that's really stepped in and filled a big hole. I think the other one is Weatherspoon. Brandon Weatherspoon's been terrific this year. He really, his game has gone to another level this season. Allen trying to post up Rosado. A very experienced left-hander out for Nolan. Out for Scott back on the floor. Bricks a three. High point rebound to Brian Greenlee. FAU with three guards and a couple of quote-unquote bigs, Laurie and Rosado. Nick Boyd, another very good three-point shooter for an FAU team that shoots it well from deep and really space the floor. Boyd will drive in. Too strong on a two. Rebound to Nolan. North Texas does a good job of forcing a lot of bad angle shots, particularly jump shots. They don't overcommit in terms of too high. They almost force you into the shot they want you to take. And I think that's what a good defense does. And so far, Florida Atlantic's been very good at the defensive end, too. It's a tie up. Possession arrow stays with North Texas. Florida Atlantic comes into the game 106 in the country and adjusted defensive efficiency. They are 15th in offense. That means on a per possession basis, they're the 105th best defense in the country. That's the big statistical difference from last year's Final Four team. Now, I don't know. You just said a lot of numbers. I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, anymore. thank you for listening. The, que <laughs> the question is here's some more numbers for you to marry now. The question is. Can you flip a switch? Uh, a lot of teams will say, no, you can't. Dusty May did talk to us before the game about how it feels like day one now with this group. Now that the lights are on and postseason play, yes. it feels like the clouds kind of lifted. Uh, you just here. answered your own question. Uh, the answer is not everybody can flip a switch, but teams that have been there and have done it before, they can. They've got the experience that they have the personnel where it is about turning on the things that you can control. And the biggest one for me is defense, right? No transition. Attack, don't sacrifice rhythm, rebound the basketball. They've gotten much better throughout the course of the year, but now you can feel the difference. Now, this is also their first game in this tournament, so there's that too. Well, five plus minute scoring drought snap by an offensive rebound and put back for Robert Allen. A 12 6 FAU lead as Boyd side irons at three, and Lorian tried for the rebound, which he touched last. We've seen some pretty nasty dunks with these two teams. One of them yesterday from C.J. Nolan, one of them a couple of weeks ago, a couple of years ago, and has found a home as a really good bench scorer and distributor for North Texas. Tough, physical. I mean, I heard you guys talking yesterday, yesterday about him as a football player. Yeah. Like you can see it, but also you kind of see that attitude on the floor. There's a football mentality that's in there. It's toughness. It's kind of being the aggressor, taking the fight to somebody else. Some of the better defensive teams are like that. I don't like a football team. North Even Texas. in their roles and responsibilities defensively. Well, North Texas has been one of the better defensive teams for a long time now in the country. Edwards way off the mark. Their leading scorer. Only two free throws. Eight players have scored in the game. Seven have hit one field goal. Edwards has hit two free throws. As Greenlee chucks that one away. Boyd is is lucky he was out of bounds or well I guess it was a backcourt anyway. The turnover for FAU. They've committed three. They've got on a little drought here. They haven't scored now in close to two and a half minutes. That was great defense. I mean the, the initial surge there were options, but ultimately down low was Robert Allen steps up, kind of takes that away, holds until the ball gets picked up. Then they all get to get out and take passes away. That's great defense.
Texas is looking at the bench trying to figure out who should inbound the ball And it's Nolan Into Scott Edwards now flanked by the 50 year senior Gaffney Around a Sissoko screen a step back three is no good Sissoko on the offensive boards grabbed it then traveled Gaffney really changes things for them. You, you can just feel that experienced presence on the floor. Like, he's bringing the ball up now. He's obviously getting it back within the offense. He's always in the right spot. I think guys that get to the right spot are so important for the offense, particularly for FAU when they need space to get on the attack. Martin lost the dribble. It was Gaffney in his 157th career game. Martin, he's fouled, a late whistle and a foul against C.J. Nolan. Three free throws coming for Elijah Martin. If it was on the shot or, or on the landing, let's see. Yeah, look, they're trying to protect the shooter. If I was a shooter, I'd want that call. If I was the defender, I'd be annoyed that it got called. So it means if you're wearing white and green, you hate it. And if you're wearing red and blue, you love it. What do you think about that call? Protect the shooter, or are we treating shooters like quarterbacks? No. My question is, is it a natural follow through by Martin? Does he kick his leg out here at the end to create the contact? Um, maybe a little. But I don't think it's I don't think it's unnatural. I don't think it's an exaggerated kick by him. So it's light, but I think it's the right call. Oh, what do we have here? Spur of the moment side. <laughs> what is he got like a, a sharpie in there he and he's must. making things up? What was the other one? Dusty Mays. Dusty May is more gone than John L. Davis's hairline. That guy had. People are ruthless. Is, is that actually a dry erase board that looks like a piece of I poster swear. board, or does he have 35 pieces of poster board? Come prepared, man. Oh, wow. We'll put that giant hat on for nothing. Yeah. Two for three for Martin. FAU five for 14, but leading by eight. North Texas is two for 13 and just turned it over. Up ahead, Lorian from Boyd. Brennan Lorian, no on the lane, wow. but it's slapped in by Nick Boyd with his offhand. Nick Boyd is really aggressive offensively. I mean, that's a dude that wants to score. He does it. He attacks the offensive glass. He always seeks out a shot. I really like Nick Boyd yeah. on the floor. He's been so aggressive defensively yeah. in this game, too. I think they all have. They've, they've really bought into to being more locked down, get stops. That's a tough two by Edwards. Snaps a 1 for 11 stretch for North Texas in the first field goal for the first team on conference guard. And, and I've got to credit North Texas for the way they've gotten back in transition defense. Stop that initial surge because FAU is really pushing it up court. Miss or make. Golden from Martin. Floats it in. And Vlad Golden has a couple of main baskets now for FAU. How would you describe his shoes today? Colorful. Okay. Fiery. Fire is probably yeah. a good way to do it. Look like a bag of flaming hot Cheetos ended up on the heel of a sneaker. All I'm natural. Gonna, All gonna natural, gonna of course. <laughs> Scott took a bump back out for Edwards. Oh man, there are jerseys in white, red, and blue all over North Texas. Scott leans in and he is fouled at 3.8. Oh, but Dusty May doesn't seem upset about that foul. He is enjoying himself and his team's defensive intensity on the sideline. Hey, tonight, the ACC Men's Tournament presented by T. Rowe Price. The semifinals, North Carolina and Pitt. Panthers need to win to get in, according to Joe Lenardi. And then Virginia and NC State, the first double-digit seed into the ACC semis in 14 years after knocking off Duke. Hey, can I say so? I, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a, a jerk to I Joe. know what you're going to say, and I'm going to But no, no, no. What I want to say is, like, I think, because I, I've fallen victim to this, right? We get all the emails from Joe, and eventually you get to the point where you go, okay, well, they're in. There are no guarantees. These are projections, sure. and he is really close. I mean, I mean we got one or two wrong, to 68 and, in the last two years. right? And, and, and a lot of times where he might be off is, like, on a seed line, and that's, you know, that's debatable, too. But 
it's not set in stone yet. I, I've fallen into this where I'm like, oh, well, they're out. Or the next four out. They're this. We don't really know. There could be a few teams that we might be a little off about. The problem with Pitt, which has played really well in the conference, they have a terrible non-conference yeah. schedule, which the committee often does not reward. Here's the thing if you're Pitt. Win the next two games. You get in. Well, the bad. How about Golden? Kind of being used as the ball mover, right? Playing through him in that high post area. And then seeing that paint open up to be able to turn the corner. That's a progression. That's what we typically see from Rosado. I mean, here's the paint. Paint's going to open up, right? You don't want to leave. I mean, that's Elijah Martin in that left corner. Like, I got a tailor straight in front of me. I probably should have circled somebody. We'll get there. Going to circle down just to feel good. I could do the, like the John Madden, Bill Raftery, just circle live action. Yep. I think there's two things they say not to do with the telescreen. Circle live action, right? Draw on a live feed. And uh, circle a graphic, right? Where there's like a graphic up there, and two things are highlighted, and then you circle the two things that are highlighted just to be redundant. But I'll get there. I'll yeah, screw well, it. when you're John Madden or Bill Raptor, you circle whatever you want. This is true. I don't know if I'll ever get there, Kevin. Not with that attitude. <laughs> Golden 0 for 2. Thanks, Tony. You are how you feel. <laughs> what a defensive performance this has been. 11 and a half minutes gone by. FAU's held North Texas to 9. Bugs finds Nolan. Clean look, and the first three finally goes down for the mean green from C.J. Nolan. Well, there's an argument that, that tough defense may actually slow down your offensive attack, right? It's really going to be possession to possession, and FAU wants this to be an up-and-down contest. Golden from Weatherspoon, spinning around on the block. Golden pacing himself, and count the basket, and the foul. Good pause there from Golden, right? Got the ball in the paint. He was looking for the double, so you're anticipating a double with that kind of advantage down low. He paused for a second, spun off that backside, went baseline, still had his head up. I mean, how about they gather here, right? Spin off, gather, bump fake, and one finish. That's a big-time move. It also didn't take five to eight seconds of the shot clock to do it, which I think has been the issue at times when they've been trying to get the ball inside the Golden. Rondo Walker stays in the game after two fouls, and Golden, after missing his last two, hits his free throw. He's got a game-high seven, and FAU's lead stretches back to nine. Nolan at the controls with a switch against Greenlee. These two bodies. This is a physical game, and Nolan got it on the rim. Allen, one of the great offensive rebounders in the country, keeps it alive. Nolan in the lane, stops Stop. and floats it. I mean, it is. I mean, there's some really physical by Elijah Martin, Brian Greenlee. Nolan's a monster. It's a big body, strong bodies on the floor. He's got the last five for UNT. Golden has the last five for FAU. Davis will look to play the post-up game. Davis probing with patience. Davis searching for an outlet. Instead, his outlet is the basket. Oh, he, he went down hard, though. Oh, Davis is in pain after a left-handed finish, squeezing in between two North Texas defenders. Yeah, a really awkward finish and an awkward fall. That is the under eight timeout. John L. Davis will get plenty of time here to get right as he's lifted to his feet by his teammates. I mean, he just kind of backed down like a boxer, but yeah, he went. Oh, yeah, he hit hard. Mere mortals, man. We ain't getting up. The hype is real. Yes, it is bad. The sign didn't work. <laughs> I don't know why. I looked as if he was bald. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. The, the sign shortcut. got me. Chris Youngblood is uh, Florida's the other player of the year. Amir Abdul Rahim, the coach of the year. Amir Abdul Rahim is a serious candidate for coach of the year nationally. The top 10 finalists on a national list that came out today. But the, the South Florida Bulls are going to play in the semis yeah. tomorrow against UAB. The frustrating problem is because they're not an at large team, they just w he won't get that respect. Sure. And that's frustrating. It's a reality, but it's frustrating. That's why I feel like. Just working to change the overall national narrative of the conference would go a long way. I think a lot of people would see the competitiveness of this league. Why don't they see the competitiveness in the Mountain West? Davis up top. Golden got stuck by the rim on a low pass. 
And it's out of bounds to North Texas. Great execution. Good roll. Good lob. Good idea. Just a little low on the pass. See, this is an interesting opportunity here in the first half. Like, if North Texas can string together here, it would be two straight buckets. Their defense has been solid. This would be an interesting moment here in the first. Both teams are four for their last five. And Texas started two for 13. Jones took a bump from Davis. Nice cut by Noel, and he finishes right through Golden. And a foul. I'd like to see the other angle of this because I thought Golden went straight up. I was kind of blocked by Golden. I thought Golden had position, kind of goes straight up. I like a no call. I, I would like a no call in that situation, right? It's it's a good contest. If anything, it's off form, but that's just a good physical finish. Nolan's just tough, man. Like when I watch games, I just write little notes. Like I just wrote dogs. Like, I just think they, they, they get out and they get after it. Bunch of dogs in the best way possible. Three-point play for Nolan. Did you spell it D-O-G-S or D-A-W-G-S? It's D-O-G-S. Okay, not dogs. No Z. It's your typical spelling. They got that dog in them? Sure. Gaffney three. Nope. Way too deep. All right, so again, like that moment, right? You're starting to feel things right now. North Texas is becoming the aggressor. Edwards bumping back on Greenly. No, Allen yep. crashing the offensive yep. glass. He is one of the best offensive rebounders in the country, Robert Allen. Playing today in his 166th career game which is the most of anybody except Indiana State's Jake Wolf in the country. I mean, this, but when you start to feel it, right, you start to find opportunities, you start to seek out other opportunities, attacking the offensive glass, taking shots with confidence and conviction. So I say making two shots in a row and getting multiple stops in a row feels like the game shifts, and another make here would be big. Allen, after his fourth offensive rebound, kicks for Edwards. Steps inside, couldn't use the angle. Allen tips it. Boyd wins it for Florida Atlantic. Let's see how Florida Atlantic can get back on the offensive end. That's not going to do it. Which shot Davis yeah. was asking about a foul, which was not there. I think in these situations, you've got to earn foul calls. Especially in this game. Jones in the lane. Yep. Yes. Leans it in with a little English, and North Texas is within two. I mean, look, we said it. There are two, two games combined. Separated by seven points. Three in the one game, four in the other. Martin trying to earn a foul. Threw it off the window. No. Rebound to Nolan. He saw Jones ahead. He found Jones. Davis stripped it. Rosado on the deck. Up ahead to Martin. Boyd. And Boyd is bumped and foul. It's getting good, Kev. Yeah, there, there are just certain moments in a game when you step back far enough, you start to feel it differently. And it felt as if North Texas just settled in. All right, things are going to be hard to come by on the offensive end, so we're going to have to really be better defensively. They were great in transition, stopping the initial surge. Made everything more difficult. Contested threes, right? Disrupted rhythm. Everything was good. They were just down, not making shots. Then they start to make a couple shots. You can string together a couple stops, a couple made baskets. You feel like you're in this ballgame. Davis, there's a no call. There's a ball that ends up on the wrong side of the top of the basket. By the way, the previous foul was C.J. Nolan's second. So Nolan, who's had a terrific tournament, is on the bench right now for North Texas. Good news is they are deep. We asked Ross Hodge before the game what's different this year's team the last couple. Last year they went 31-7 when the NIT he said... We could not have survived losing two starters in previous yeah. years. We were good, but not deep. This team was healthy for two conference games, but they still run nine deep, and they survived that. So Nolan out, not a huge thing. You can bring Scott back on the floor. And here he is, Allen with a left hand and thunder to tie the game. Here Rosado was looking for a switch. It just wasn't communicated, and Allen went all the way to the basket. Nine straight for North Texas. Davis stripped. Davis recovers. Davis leans in, and Davis ends that night all run.
He's still not creating rhythm though on the offensive end and I, and I like what Davis is able to do get a bucket when you need a bucket But their offense is something you want to build up as you go. They only have two assists. On yeah, that's makes. a big piece of it Edwards and a switch with Laurie and Edwards lost it and he lost it because he was bumped and fouled Red and Lorian with his second foul, and North Texas with it a basket. They really started to find it. Not, not really just on the offense. 12 for North yep. Texas, only four for FAU. The Mean Green using that depth well. I mean, also FAU has been better in this game with, with Golden in the game. We'll see if Rosado can find it out. There are times when you just have to kind of adjust to your opponent, figure out where what you do fits and works. John Bugs has not scored in the game for North Texas, and he won't score here. He turns it over to Rosado. North Texas's fifth turnover. Davis, Weatherspoon, steps in. Good really defense. Good hand -to -hand really defense. good defense. Transition. And you got to remember, too, that was a four-on-four -four situation, and, and they got that stop. Boyd on the drive. Boyd got his man in the air and jumped it through. Right through Bugs. Nick Boyd off the bench with a second basket. I think FAU's going to have to kind of level up to this physicality, too. I mean, they're looking for calls. You, you can't wait for calls. Just play through it, earn them. Here's Scott trying to take Boyd to work. Scott spinning. Scott fouled. And that's on Nick Boyd. That's his first foul after his second basket a moment ago. Yeah, look, I'm sure we'll see some fouls in here. No, I don't really think that's anything. Right? There's nothing there. It's just tough finish. Like, I, th I think it's going to be tough all night. I mean, again, you just watch this North Texas team. There's a, re there's a reason why they're one of the best defenses in the conference. Like, they are tough. They're committed to stopping the basketball. They're committing to stopping transition. And they're good at it. We are two days away from Selection Sunday. It all starts at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central at ESPN with College Basketball Live. Then the men's bracket is revealed at 6 with live reaction. Bracketology breaks it down at 7, followed by the NCAA Women's Selection Special live on ESPN and more Bracketology. Field of 68 for the men we know will include Florida Atlantic. Will it include an American auto bid? Find that out. Over the next couple of days that is that's kind of been the story of the tournament here is Like I, I just feel South Florida the season they've played in this conference, which is not easy Is deserving of an appearance in the NCAA tournament. I don't care what happens from here on out Obviously FAU is an NCAA tournament team and a dangerous one of that And if they are an eight game two at eight nine whew, they were last year uh -huh. Golden driving, Golden finishing strong. He's got nine. He has finished strong, and I, I gotta give Golden credit for that. He has developed a toughness around the rim that he always hasn't always had, and a big piece of that is his balance. Talk about balance on the defensive end. Being strong in your base when you go to finish, that matters too. Golden trying to defend now, and he does well as Allen's shot goes wildly careening off the glass. Davis, three-pointer Martin. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's really big because it's, I want to say, probably the first obvious breakdown yes. for North Texas on the defensive end. And a miss there allows North Texas to kind of dodge a bullet. That, that way you're at least punishing a defense that made a mistake. Bugs from Jones. Back. Leading three-point shooter in the American at 47%. John Bugs is on the board. What's the difference between double zero and zero? I don't know. Right. Some programs won't hand out a second zero, though. Let's call him over and ask. Davis. No. Not at all. And Edwards is fouled by John L. Davis. That's his first. And the eighth against Florida Atlantic, which means a one and one for Bugs. Or for Edwards, beg your pardon. And Davis has gotten him in, himself into some tough spots. I, I think there are times where you think you have a drive, but if you look at the angle, you realize you don't have anything good. If you look at where you end up, you realize, oh, I don't really have anything good. John L. Davis has gotten himself into some tough spots. Now, the tough finish that he got to go when he landed on his back, that was just a great play. But you've got to be careful where you get stopped with the basketball. And the other thing is North Texas does a good job of taking those first and second passes away, forcing you into a cross-court pass that they're going to anticipate and try to steal. Good communication there between player and coach. A strong conversation between Dusty May and John L. Davis. 
Thank God we didn't have five cameras when I was playing. You would have been I, like, I think that, Whoa, I think that, was, I think that was good. And that's a coach and a player of great respect for each other. Don't you yeah, think? look, no, I'm saying that you're saying not that specific. My, you're saying there would have been moments with yeah, you. My body language probably wasn't always that good. I find that hard to believe for the Ducky C. Drake Award winner. I was humbled by the time I earned the Team Spirit Award, Kim. Did I get that right? Is it Ducky yeah, C. Ducky, Drake? You've been around with me long enough to know What's the, the C stand for. Uh, not a, uh, Chucky. <laughs> Ducky Chucky. <laughs> I would have gone with Charles, but that sounded better. Golden on the roll from Boyd! Oh! Golden tried to break the rim, and there was a foul in there somewhere. No, no, no. Let's not break the rims. We've already had a few of that. We've broken the other rim twice. So this one is game to be ripped down. Wow! Golden couldn't get it to go, but the foul was in there against yeah, Scott. Maybe on the maybe. body. You know what I mean? He really he should have made it. Maybe if he made it, they wouldn't call it. Yeah, and Scott's second. You try that hard, you at least get a foul out of it. It's a good play, though, to be able to just freeze that big defender long enough to give Golden the time to roll. Because first, the only way you get that roll is if you show instead of screen. Which means that it's going to take a little split second, maybe half second or more, to allow Golden to turn and roll to the basket. One, one for two. Look at Boyd crash the glass, and he'll shoot two. That's going to be three. That's Scott. Back-to-back -back fouls against Scott, who will be hoisted off the floor and immediately hoisted over to the bench. I mean, it's just such a fight. I mean, that's Elijah Martin in there against Scott, and they're committing a second defender pinching down to keep Elijah Martin off the glass. And Boyd is able to come in from the three-point line uh, somewhat uncontested. So Scott with two fouls in one second of action. There's nobody at the scorer's table, but they've got to get him out of the game. You think he's got three fouls. And they're going to keep in for maybe, offense, yeah, I guess. Maybe you play the offense game where you say, all right, let's just get a good possession offensively. Maybe take that, take a timeout if you get a make. Get him out of the game. They haven't, well, they have taken their first half timeout, actually. Well, they have. Okay. We'll just throw it off someone's leg. Edwards. Been defended so well by Boyd and others. Edwards has eight points, but he's two for seven. He's 0 for three from deep. Jones. Back out for Edwards. On the blow by. Bugs. Seven to shoot. It's Edwards late in the clock as it often is for North Texas. Back rim for the three. Look at Scott go over the top. Oh, oh that could have been his fourth right there. That was very close for Scott. <laughs> wow. There was the over the back okay. first, and then there was the bump against Boyd. All right, Dusty takes the timeout. Gives him a chance to get Scott out. Oh, oh man. A good half. A year of living dangerously for Scott. We'll be back at 30 to Fort Worth. The game, just don't touch anybody. Like, do that. Don't touch anybody. That's it. That's your one rule. Don't touch anybody. If you get beat, you can see the layup, but don't touch anybody. He's out of the game right now. Walker is on the floor. FAU looking for the final shot. A half they have led pretty much the whole way. Martin out for Boyd. Boyd steps in and it swirls out. That's the half. By the way, the half ends with an FAU player tumbling to the ground and Weatherspoon. That is a fitting image of a half where there have been bodies all over this floor. Yeah, that one looked more like an Italian soccer league. Mm. Must and believe in what you're doing. That was a belief that, that Temple had last night. Right? Chucky Harris goes out with that injury. They had built momentum in the first half, and then they believed they could control the game. I feel like North Texas, while they're down, they have belief that they can dictate the way this second half is played. Only down five, it won't take much to get back into it. And here's Bugs trying to cut help. it to two, yep. and he will. Got a good screen from Sissoko, and John Bugs the third hits his second three. You just you felt like you saw it, and you think about the foul trouble. Scott's got three, almost got his fourth. If they can get through the next six minutes without foul trouble and continue to defend the way they did, particularly in transition, it's going to be a ball game. Davis is pass deflected by Jones and taken away by Scott. FAU turns it over for the fifth time. North Texas was led in that first half by Edwards and Nolan with eight each. Well, Edwards did not shoot it well. Here's Edwards from Bugs. That's his first three, and just like that, North Texas is in the lead. 
little baseline runner action where they're going to help up and they're going to switch and scramble. And FAU is just late, not there on the catch. He's able to get the shot up. Davis with a shimmy, a shoulder, and an offensive foul. His second. And in 64 seconds, North Texas has turned this game on its head. Look, last two threes came in the same location. There it is, baseline runner. You're going to screen just enough room to get the shot up. And on the second play, it was really just good ball movement. Gaffney had come from the exact opposite side of the floor because they were providing help on, help on Scott with the back down. So they just scrambled out of it, took Gaffney to the opposite side. He was just a split second late. Second against John L. Davis for FAU. Where Texas was two for nine from three in the first half. Two for two on the first two possessions of the second. Jones gets another good Sissoko screen. Behind the back for Bugs. And he couldn't get a third in a row. Davis, six point first half for him. He has turned it over though four times. Martin. It's his defender of the air. Back out for Gaffney. Weatherspoon will take it. Looking for a touch for Golden. Instead, Davis flashes. John L. Davis leans in and puts FAU back on top. I really like Davis in that area. Kind of flash to the high post, frees the defense with a high low look, and then you got an ISO where he is so crafty finishing around that five, six foot area. Only unanimous first team all conference pick shared the player of the year with South Florida's Chris Youngblood. That's fair. Youngblood, Young, Youngblood's been terrific. Who was picked? Was, was it Elijah Davis Martin, and John Martin. L. Davis, yeah. right? Yep. Edwards with a roll in. Back on top, North Texas. Edwards has a quick five and a half. You know, because preseason accolades mean everything. That's right. He Amazing, he was, the, he was the co-player of the year preseason and the co-player of the year postseason, just with a different co. Golden is bumped and a foul against... Eli Sissoko, that's his first. He said North Texas has to be, they put themselves in a position where they can be the aggressor. Well, I think they've done this. That, that's a tough attack. Like, again, going back to Temple last night, they became the aggressor. They had the conviction and the belief to become, maintain, and sustain them being the aggressor in the game. That means you're dictating how the game's played on both ends. And there's a hook and there's a foul. It's against Jones. And it's his first. John L. Davis is just, he's shifty, right? There's just no other way to put it. He uses angles, uses his body. Kind of hard to cover, hard to figure out. And he coaxes you into a lot of fouls. Like that high low. Golden over Sissoko. Yeah. Really like if they could get John L. Davis in that situation. And if... If Golden's good enough to recognize when he has position or doesn't have it, if he doesn't have position, flash back out to that short corner area and allow, uh, allow John L. Davis to go to work. If not, hold your position and play high-low. Here's Jones over Golden. North Texas is back in front. That's our fourth lead change in a couple of minutes. Davis was looking Golden's way again. Guarded by Edwards, Davis takes him into the paint, Davis banks it in, and the pendulum swings the way the Owls. Let's we'll see who can get easier baskets. Not many are easy in this game. FAU's defense has been good. North Texas we know all about. Jones in the face of Golden. That is a long two, but an impressive two for Ruben Jones. Six lead changes and not yet four minutes in the second half. Davis can make it seven at the line coming up. Davis is just really smooth in the paint. I mean, he's just real. This is a tough cover. Good balance, good patience. And then on the other end, you kind of use the ball screen to kind of force a switch, right? Here's the switch, right? Golden doesn't really recognize the switch situation. Gaffney not communicating well. And I cannot deep squat like that. That's... Did you see that deep spot? I did see that deep spot. It hurt me to look at. Seven lead changes in the second half Super now, by the spot. way. And uh, that was a non-shooting foul. Wonder if that Jones shot is going to get looked at, by the way. It looked like it was very close to being behind the line. It was called a two to be reviewed at the under 16. Martin on the drive. Back out for Greenlee. Steps into a three. Missed it. Golden smacked it out of bounds. 
Did you say steps into a three or he took <laughs> yes. steps into a <laughs> Did three? You hear how I emphasize the yeah, word steps. I, I, look, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Thank you very much. CJ Nolan has returned along with Robert Allen for North Texas. Bugs and Sissoko are out. You look at the foul trouble. That's something that you can start to attack, uh, whether it's, you know, Nolan. Scott with his foul He's trouble. He's off the floor as well for Walker. Jones Greenlee went down way too easily, and then after trying to sell the foul, gets the steal. Jones is slow to get back. It's a five on four until it's deflected out of bounds by Walker. So, seven lead changes in four minutes and 14 seconds. What else are you doing with the rest of your night? Stick with us at Fort Worth. Official bump fake. Hey, LOL, JK. Um, that, <laughs> that foul was actually on Scott. He has three again. Sissoko now has one. All right, let's inbound the ball before we can get a third review of the foul. All right, we'll try to get some more information on what exactly occurred there during the break. That was a fun bit of time. Martin leans in. Weatherspoon tries to parry it home. Rebound to Jones. North Texas defensively does such a good job of showing in help position. Just getting that ball to freeze for a second allows them time to get back to cover their man. Defense really is that solid. There's Ruben Jones. Back rim rebound, John L. Davis. Oh, oh Davis boy. wasn't looking at Nolan. He almost threw it away. Weatherspoon. Davis decided not to try the three. Instead, he'll have his pass to Golden knocked away. Walker with a steal. Walker with a run out. Walker with a layup. Four-point lead for North Texas's seventh-seeded Mean Green Machine. Which has found its sea legs here after a slow start to the game. I know John L. Davis is he's loose the way he plays It's loose. It's fluid. We know that but there are times where he just needs to be more deliberate and This is one of those times turned it over five times Golden trying to find the right footwork Golden will go to the line Walker went down hard after that. He is grabbing his shoes Tie and retie the right one. Third foul, we think. Anyway, yeah, yeah. on Rondo Walker. We'll come back to you 20 minutes later and tell you whether it was. I said, or not. Sorry, that was a foul on uh, Allen, so it's his first. And it got the foot of Walker. One on Allen, two on Walker, three on Scott. You know, and the thing is, like, not all turn turnovers are created equal. Like, when they're just careless in the sense that you're just kind of throwing it to push it up. And it gets taken, there's no room, and you try to throw a pocket pass. And those are the inexcusable ones. The ones that you're okay with are aggressive turnovers, where you're really trying to go baseline and kick that thing out, and it gets tipped. So you know what happens, or you sail one into the stands. Like, they're aggressive turnovers. The ones he can get rid of are those careless, carefree turnovers. They use only turned it over seven times. Davis so has five of those. He does average two and a half a game. Now he averages a lot of everything else. But North Texas has defended well as they often do. Yeah, but your own turnovers are rhythm killers too. Yeah, that's the other thing is North Texas does enough to make it difficult to develop a rhythm in the game. How many pockets of this game would you say FAU's had their usual rhythm? Maybe two, two three? I would say two. There was a 1-9-0 run and there was another pocket that they just didn't make a ton of shots, but the game was favoring them. Led this game by as many as ten. North Texas now leads it by three. Six or so into the half. Edwards over Golden. Rebound Martin. Davis crossing his way over into the paint. No. Golden missed time to jump. Got it anyway and got fouled. Golden will return to the line. I got as he rubs the right side of his head. I'm going to remind myself again Scott does have three fouls. So he still has to be careful. That was Allen's second. You just wonder how many offensive rebounding opportunities you get because of someone's foul trouble, right? They don't want to engage physically. So it's good to attack the glass. Tough day at the line so far for Golden. It was four for eight. It's in your face, Kevin. On the... He just said in your face. Did he? Is it still not a tough night at the line? He's four for eight. Maybe he said it in Russian, but he said it. Well, it's a less tough night at the line, but it's still a tough night at the line. I'm not rooting for him to miss. I'm just telling the facts of the game. He goes two for two. Good for him. 
Yes. <laughs> As a fan of human beings doing things well, I'm happy for it. Yeah. Sure you are. No dog in the fight. That the reverse announcers jinx? Yes. Say somebody's been bad and they make two? Proven. To prove that they can make it. Nolan on the back down. Golden shadow show to help. Back out to Edwards with 10 to shoot. We see CJ Nolan. Greenlee scrambling back into position. Golden on the switch. Tough one. Golden got the extended arm, but Allen is fifth offensive rebound of the game. Nolan driving, lost it, and was fouled. That's the second of the half against FAU. North Texas has some opportunity with the ball screen, particularly later in the shot clock, where they just drag it out. If you, the longer you drag it out, the more you get golden away from the basket. Now, if you turn and attack towards the foul line area, he's just going to flatten drop. He's going to keep dropping, and then you got to get over and get back in front. But if you drag it out almost sideways, it's going to eventually force him out that hard dive by the big forces the guard to stay with the big and then you've got an advantage and ultimately it was the big i'm pretty sure it was robert allen tracking down that offensive rebound so golden and davis the two leading scorers on the game and the season are both out at the same time for fau rosado and laureate to place him edwards Knocked around and grabbed by Nick Boyd, who just committed the foul on the previous possession. Boyd up top! Oh, Lorian missed the dunk! Nolan, second missed dunk for Florida Atlantic today. Edwards, turbo charge into the lane! Good if it goes, it didn't. He'll shoot two. Jason Edwards, an 83% shooter to the line. So you're not going to get many of those opportunities against the North Texas. Now, they have been really good about stopping the basketball, but if you lose sight of that backside, man, he was up there too. Not a lot of guys miss dunks because they're too high. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when you're looking down at the rim, it's a little harder. You know, trust me, I know yeah, from sure. experience. Fisher Price. Well, my son's shooting on like a seven-foot rim right. right now. He thinks dad can do anything. I, I tip jam all his misses, and it's the greatest thing. <laughs> Their field goal percentage is immaculate oh, in the backyard. High. Yeah. Edwards one for two. He's five for six from the line. Scott will check out. Ruben Jones replaces him. I'm also one of those dads that doesn't purposefully lose to their children. What kind of lesson are you learning? Can't do that. Builds character, sure. They got to earn it. I mean, he is three and a half. It's going to be four. When do you think he'll beat you? It's a tough world, man. Five, six? <laughs> when's, when's he going to get you? No. Not until he can. Okay. Now, with my help, and who knows? It could be like next year. <laughs> Rosado from Greenlee. Rosado is fouled. And that's six and a half against North Texas. So the rest of this game, Florida Atlantic will be shooting free throws. It's interesting. It, it's a risk you take when the game gets into the half court. It's harder to be as physical in the half court. Sometimes when there's good flow, a lot of fouls get hidden. But when you get in the half court and get into half court sets, fouls tend to get called. That was the second on Sissoko for real this time. Rosado, wait. Spring season in full swing. The American Conference on ESPN Plus is your exclusive home for more than 500 women's lacrosse, softball, and baseball games. ESPN Plus also the destination for all American Spring Championships. Sign up today if you haven't already at ESPNPlus.com slash AAC or download the ESPN app. I mean, the difference between his first free throw attempt and his second is like somebody else just Took over his body in that yeah. first one. Space Jam, Monstars kind of deal. FAU's not hit from the field in four and a half minutes, so they do have four points at the line in that span. Where Texas has gone cold for a while, too. Edwards somehow kept his composure. How about kept his footing? I mean, that's the footwork, the split, ball was low, still finished. 
Nick Boyd hasn't really gotten it going yet. Pierce is Don't dunk it, just lay it in. There's the first field goal in about five for FAU. I think the second Nick Boyd gets going offensively, you're going to see FAU put a run together. There's something about when he's on the attack, what it changes around the perimeter and the opportunity it creates. Jones trying to take Lorian. Hard screen, Sissoko. Bugs didn't want to shoot it there. Jones will. And it's offside iron. Elijah Martin for Greenlee. Rosado, shot fake, spin, fade away, too strong. This is not his game. Right? When he's a ball mover, when he's involved in the action, I, I think that's when he's at his best. But having to score is not really where he's at. And, and gosh, Nolan's just tough, man. I might pick him first, just not, not to have to play against him. First bucket of the half, he's into double figures. FAU's been without Golden and Davis now for a little more than two and a half minutes. They're down by three with Martin in the paint. Martin trying to follow his own miss. Martin bumped Edwards and commits the foul. Elijah Martin's first. North Texas still on top. Yeah, North Texas has been impressive. I, I would say, look, we always show highlights when we go to break, and it, it's, you know, get to the basket. Basketball championship. Talking to the commissioner. Mike Oresco came over to say hi during the break, and Mike, uh, very happy with the addition of the new five yeah. teams in the league this year. Gosh. These two, North Texas and FAU, Charlotte, UAB. So four of the five new teams in the American this year are still playing right now, and if Charlotte wins the next game, three of the four semifinalists will be first-year additions to the American. Bugs misses a jumper, rebound by Davis. I think a big part of the, the narrative issue was the fact that you're losing Houston. Right? Losing Houston was, was such a big shock to the narrative of the conference. It's like, well, now who is it? Well, it's FAU, and then it's Memphis. But the reality is this conference is better bottom to top than it is top to bottom, right? Any given year, I think you're going to see a different team towards the top. Any given year, it could be North Texas, it could be UAB, it could be FAU, it could be Temple at some point. Wichita State's going to be really good. They're, they've been close all year. Look at what Charlotte's done this year. I just think it's going to be a really unique conference where year in, year out, it depends on the group you've got and how much they can play to your culture, your consistency, your brand. And then I think it's up to the rest of us to help grow the brand that is the American. I keep saying, I, I think it can be like the Mountain West. Good basketball, competitive league, but they've got to be able to get to the point where they get good non-conference games, get the net get the net rankings up a little bit in the conference, so when you do beat up on each other, it doesn't really hurt you as much. Yeah, what's hurt the league right now is the non-conference schedule is great for FAU. Memphis played a tough non-conference schedule. There's a tie-up, jump ball, the arrow to FAU. Right now it's only a one or a two-bid lead because oh, the non-conferences were not great. But here is the new league. Six teams added this year, UTSA and Rice as well. Temple way up there in Philly. The league is really consolidated around the south, south central of the United States, the southeast with FAU, South Florida. What leagues are kind of located in a region anymore. Yeah, I know, that's true. I mean, I guess the good thing is they called it the American, so they could pretty much get anybody. That's a brilliant bit of branding. You know. The Nomadic League. Well, they're all Nomadic Leagues now, and UCLA is going to play Rutgers for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> we know what the reason is. FAU turns it over. Ka-ching! <laughs> if it was a radio show, we would have played that. That's right. Ka-ching! One point lead for North Texas. We've reached the under 10 of the second half. Three quarters of the way through this quarterfinal game. Winner gets Charlotte or Temple in the semis tomorrow night. That game coming up next. Jones, Davis calling for a travel. Bugs contested three. Rebound will stay with North Texas. There was a foul on the try by Sissoko. Let's see, the foul is going to be called on so Golden, his second. Yeah. By the way, the foul before we went to break was not on Martin. I want to clean that up. It was Brennan Lorient, the reserve big man. So Lorient has four, and Golden now has two. I'm sure the world was waiting in anticipation for you to clean that up. Well, I was waiting in anticipation, so. You're a pro. Yeah. Why do I care about the rest of the world, really? We do this for ourselves. That's a travel. Eighth turnover for North Texas. 
I'm telling you, there's just something about this North Texas team that I appreciate, and it's it goes back to that comment I made earlier, maybe in the first half, about the, the, the dogs, man. They just get after it. I'm really impressed with their ball screen coverage, though. They do such a good job with that big kind of shading to the basketball, yet not allowing that pass back to the big with the guy on the ball maintaining pressure. Boyd on the drive. Boyd tiptoeing in the baseline. Yeah. No, he didn't do it. He stepped out of bounds, and he turns it right back. FAU is a, they're a baseline hungry team. They want to attack that baseline and throw out. Yeah. That being said, North Texas has done a great job. It's not about stopping the baseline drive. It's about taking their passing options away. So when that baseline drive goes, it's up to the guy on the ball to force a bad angle, meaning you got fallen out of bounds. You're forcing a bad pass, and then you're going to have everybody else take their passes away. Scott, stripped by Boyd, got it back. Double team in the corner. Scott with a great find for Edwards. Oh, a dagger three out of the corner from Scott. Edwards delivers for a four-point lead. It just seems like North Texas has had answers. They're playing more freely than FAU is. And I think they've had more options offensively. A mean green maniac starting to make some noise. 40 minutes down the road in Denton. There's a foul there as Davis spun around and he'll get two free throws off the three-pointer from Jason Edwards. I mean, it's so good stuff. And look, if you have a double, and if you could pass out of the double, you're going to get a shot, right? If you could pass it right to the person that's wide open, you're going to get an immediate shot. There are teams that double hard, and I always feel like I would welcome that double because as long as I can pass out of it, I have an advantage. We're playing four on three. You're forcing a scramble defensively. That's where teams struggle in the defensive end. This is a significant foul, John. That's four yeah. on Reuben Jones, yeah. who is the winningest player in North Texas history. And you can see the frustration as he screams into the towel. Well, I would say, why is he covering John L. Davis? If you want to avoid fouls, don't cover John L. Davis. He is so shifty with his ball movement, his body movement, his footwork. He lulls you to sleep by standing up, and then he explodes. Like, there's so many difficult things about covering John L. Davis. If you have foul trouble, switch it up. Put a marker at this point in the game. Jones to the bench at 8.15. Now a two-point game with the senior Jones at four fouls. North Texas has continued to have answers offensively, though. Scott bullies his way in. Scott got a couple of yep. players in the air, and he finishes. Aaron Scott with seven, and Reuben Jones as loud as anybody on the bench. Martin trying to go baseline. Martin found Weatherspoon through the trees. A cutting Davis receives the ball from Weatherspoon. Davis lays it up and in. He's got 14. The lead back to two. Yeah, they're, they're really going to have to get better. When the ball comes out and it leads to long closeouts, the closeouts are really good. They're strong closeouts. They're taking shots away, but they're not giving up drives. The immediate back cut when the ball comes out is going to be open because of the way they're scrambling out the three-point shooters. Scott. Another cross-court feed for Bugs. Bugs, Nolan, and Edwards. Three ball handlers, three shooters on the floor right now. Here's Edwards again. Turbo charging into the paint on the oh, rim, yeah. and a late foul is there against Golden. That will be the third against Vlad Golden. Foul trouble, an issue on both sides. North Texas with the lead at the seven-minute, two-second mark. At large candidate, it seems, from the Americans. So, if North Texas wins, they would upend the bubble. They would guarantee a second bid for the American. Joe Lenardi only has South Florida in as an automatic qualifier. So, the Texas AM fans are probably locked in on their game with Kentucky, but they might be keeping one eye on this one as well. In Terre Haute, they've been sitting and waiting since Sunday when Indiana State lost to Drake in the Arch Madness final. Seats all was fun. in St. John's, a bunch of Big East teams are waiting. I, look, you saw Indiana State. I, I wasn't good. there in person. I hope they get in. Yeah, no, they should. They, they really should. And if they were in a power conference with all their you know, schedule, their wins, everything, I, they, they're in. I, I think it's just hard you know, when you don't win your conference tournament championship. And, and you kind of put it up to the 
committed committee to put yeah. you in when other teams out there have good wins uh, that kind of validate them. Golden cut it to one. Edwards will push it back to three. He's got 22. Florida Atlantic, if they're going to play loose defensively, they need to pick the pace and the tempo of the game back Ooh. up. There's a loose pass. Golden got fouled. Golden's going to go to the line here for a one and one. The, the problem is, like, look, there are times when you give up a quick basket like this. Edwards gets to the basket. He, may, he lays it in pretty quickly. That's fine, so long as you can get out and run. You've got a point guard at the rim. Now get it out and go. The problem is North Texas has been so good at getting back. Look at the awareness. Did you see Edwards head on a swivel looking at all the threats on the floor as he gets back in transition? Anticipation when getting back in transition is the first step to playing defense. Golden has to be a two-shot foul, and he rims out the first. He's now 5 for 10 at the line. FAU has missed seven free throws. FAU needs a two-minute pocket. They need a really good two minutes here in 21 seconds. Get a good pocket. Get some momentum. Get some flow back into this game. It's really good. The second half has gone away in North Texas. Golden splits a pair. Leads back to two. Nothing new in this league. Which had... Up 30% of its games finish within one possession or go to overtime. The most of any conference in the regular season this year. These teams played a three-point game and a four-point game. What do they have in store in matchup three? Edwards. Rimmed out a three for the corner. Knocked out to Nolan for the offensive rebound. Great hustle by Scott to keep it alive. Allen on the bounce, back for Edwards. Five to shoot it. Edwards all alone. He missed a really good look, and then Scott went crashing into his numbers. teammate Allen. Five numbers. on three. This is a must score for FAU, and they do. Golden out of the air to Martin to tie the game at 58. A really good presence of mind by Vlad Golden. Up in the air, doesn't have the, the body control there to come down with. It makes the pass to Elijah Martin. It's a big time play and ultimately that, that was a breakdown defensively for FAU. They dodged one there. Two North Texas tip players took each other out. They had numbers and it tells you Vlad Golden has been a big weapon once more for FAU. Jason Edwards with 22, the third leading score in the league for North Texas. There have been three ties and nine lead changes and with 520 to go, it is anybody's game here in what's been maybe the most entertaining game in this American tournament so far. Well, there's the other thing that we haven't really said, which is how hard it is to beat a team three times, right? That's kind of that cliche thing we say at this point in the season. The Nolan miss. Here's Nick Boyd. Boyd all the way to the rim. Golden missed the third FAU dunk. But it's Boyd for three. He won't take it. He'll drive in. He will squeeze it home. There's the tenth lead change, and FAU for the first time in a long while is on top. But watch it when Nick Boyd gets assertive and aggressive on the offensive end. They're a different offensive team. He's into double figures. He has really taken to this bench roll the last six games. First lead for FAU in about 11 minutes. Scott posting him down. Boyd trying to man up here with five to shoot. Scott fighting for position. We're not even close. Great defense by Nick Boyd. Well, just hold your ground, right? Force the toughest shot possible, and the longer it takes, the less rhythm there's going to be in that shot. It's really about just getting it off. Davis. Davis oh, goes underneath the rim and scores it. And FAU has all the life now. Talked about a couple minutes, right? Can you put together a couple minutes if you're FAU? What kind of momentum can you take into the under four? This would be a big basket for North Texas. Scott trying to bully Boyd again. He runs over him. It's a blocking foul. I don't know about that. Neither do the FAU coaches. No, I mean, look, there's nothing more you can do as a defender. I mean, you just get yourself in position. John L. Davis. He's just been tough. You're getting them. The fact that he didn't get that is, I, I don't, I don't, I just think that's one they're going to look back at and say, yeah, we got that wrong. But that's an interesting point. He makes two of these free throws. Eh, it's a different story. Now that foul is impacting the game. So one and one, and Scott gets the first. By the way, Reuben Jones is back in the game. Remember, he checked out 
at the 8-15 mark with four fouls. And now Brandon Weatherspoon is down. And Brandon Weatherspoon's calling out for a review here. I say, I'd like to see it again. See if they're trying to get another foul on Jones. But why is Jones mixing it up at all? Like, this goes back to the don't touch anybody. Yeah, Jones with the four he fouls. Did. He clamped down. Wow, that could have been. <laughs> he, he had the right arm around him. That could have been Jones' fifth foul. I so. mean, it's not just the hook and hold. It's the clamp down that they'll get you on. That's interesting. So it's a 13-5 run in between Jones' fourth foul and the two free throws there in favor of FAU. Inside to Golden. Davis forces it in. It's out of bounds. And it's off of Golden. Leading his case in. There's no way I was the last to touch it. But the ruling is he was in his North Texas ball. I don't know. I didn't see it at all. So I don't really have an opinion until I see it again. Looked like it rolled off of his leg. I don't know. I mean, I get, get why they call that. FAU's 10th turnover. Now let's see if North Texas can do something with some of the things that have gone their way. Now you got a matchup you like. I go right back to yeah, Jones. He passed out of it. Nolan against Weatherspoon. Jones against Golden. Jones steps in. Jones drives. Yep. Welcome back to the game, Ruben Jones. That's the way to do it. You go back to the matchup you like, and obviously Golden is not going to be able to handle him off the bounce. Great attack. Tie ball game. Nick Boyd puts his head down, finds Golden at the foul line. Golden has initiated a lot of the offense from here. He grabs his own miss. He finishes strong. Vlad Golden puts Florida Atlantic back on top with a chance at a three-point play. And he has just fouled Reuben Jones out of what might be his final college game. That's a tough one for Jones. I mean, you, just, you want to get in there, deter the shot. You don't want to pick up the foul. But how about Vlad Golden? Being assertive and quick about his moves. The longer he waits, the less opportunity he's going to have. The quick move is probably the best move. That's tough for Jones. So Ruben Jones came back to the floor for a minute, six seconds. And the winningest player in the history of North Texas men's basketball has fouled out with 2.42 to go. A part of 92 victories at North Texas and NIT championship a year ago. It's a good program. Like, I'm telling you, like, again, Cincinnati, UCF, Houston leave, and it's like, oh, man, that's, that's hard to replace. You're right. It's impossible to replace, but it's a lot different. I would say the middle and the bottom are completely different because of what left and what came in. Bottom to top, this conference is terrific. No one's really been able to emerge other than South Florida. And they're not even talked about in consideration as an at-large team. It's wild. I get why, the, the net and all that nonsense. But Three-point play for Golden. A lead back to three. On the drive, Noland is fouled. So C.J. Noland will shoot two. It's not on the shot. That was on Weatherspoon, but it's going to be called a two-shot foul anyway. Other spoons first, FAU's eighth. He was shooting on that? The call was yes. Oh, no, maybe it's going to be a one and one It will be a foul on the floor, okay. so it is a one and one it's just And he no missed way. it. But look at this. Allen fighting for the offensive rebound again. Jump ball, quick jump ball. North Texas possession. Simultaneous possession there, huh? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Love the difference. Simultaneous and instantaneous. Like, did you possess the ball or possess the guy that had the ball? Because we do that a lot. It's almost like to, to deter whatever can happen next. We just call it jump ball. Good effort, though. I still like this. There's something about this North Texas team, man. They're, I will say there's something about it. It's inspiring. The, the way they play is inspiring. They're tough. They're physical. They're aggressive. Defensively, they're very good. I mean, like, from a technical standpoint, they're good. All on the surface, you look at the stats, you're like, yeah, the best defenses in the conference. 
But then you watch them cover a ball screen with so many weapons on the floor, they're remarkable. The way they close out, remarkable. That's why FAU has struggled to pull away from them tonight. That's why they struggled to pull away from them in the last two contests earlier this season. And a handoff Edwards. Switch with Golden. Edwards blows by him. Finish too strong. What do we have here? Jump off. Another tie up. Allen and Golden. And we know the arrow goes to FAU for this one. Edwards made the right move. Just tried so hard to get that shot up before Golden could get to it. FAU all season. They felt like they can play with four guards and go smaller because Golden cleans up so much at the rim. His presence is enough to help deter a lot of shots. He does, but somebody who really knows how to attack and, and get to the options and counters within a ball screen can pick apart the way they defend ball screens, playing him flat low. There are options. An experienced team will figure it out. Wow. Davis sets a tough two and he rattles it in. And FAU leads by five for the first time since the very beginning of the second half. Edwards takes a timeout. That leaves North Texas with one. With the Owls threatening to pull away in the final two. That's just me as an older dude thinking about when I played, what I would have felt in that moment. What you feel is, hey, this is a big possession. A stop and a score here changes the entire feel of the rest of the game. As this would right here for FAU. Stop and a score changes the, the remaining minute 40. And no Reuben Jones. He is fouled out for North Texas. Nolan gets in the lane. His floater is short. Rebounded by Brian Greenlee, who just checked back in for FAU. So this is one where if you're FAU, you can really be a little bit more methodical. Work the ball a little bit. Change sides of the floor. Try to get Golden on a slip. Or just let John L. Davis be John L. Davis. Or that. How about Martin? Three for Elijah Martin! Everybody's so worried about the roll. They went under that second screen. And you pay for it. An 8-0 run with just over a minute to go. Edwards blocked by Golden and a foul. Edwards to the line with North Texas's hopes slipping away. On this three from Elijah Martin. I like the action, right? You just come over. There's the first. Here's the second. You try to sneak. Bugs tries to sneak under the second. I thought that's what I saw. That's exactly what happened. There's the first. Good screen by John L. Davis. And ultimately, if, if Vlad Golden rolls hard on that second, even slips it, there's a chance John L. Davis's man has to take him. So there are options within that set. But Bugs going underneath gave Elijah Martin a wide open look. And he hadn't had many. That was the first three pointer of the second half for Florida Atlantic. What are they, three for 11? So it is. Three for 11. Yeah. They shoot it really well, too. Edwards hits two. It's a six point game. But I think that's more a byproduct of the good defense for for North Texas. They've closed out so well. They've taken those shots away. They've also taken the dribble drive and kick away. They haven't overhelped. Davis will drive it here, kick it out. Martin, that's a quick three. Oh, he missed it, and Golden tracked it down. I mean, that was a shot you better make <laughs> if you're going to take it that early in the clock, and he was bailed oh, out by look Golden. Look at Dusty Bay. Look at him right now. Oh, you know, boy. He, that was one of those, like, <laughs> kind of, he's clapping to show, like, hey, we're good, but he shook his head, like, Lord Almighty. Yeah, like, that, that was the look, <laughs> staring into space. Please, God, go in. Please, God, go in. Golden now 21 and 10, his eighth double double of the year. And he sets up Nick Boyd, who has had a great game with 11 and 6 off the bench. Had the game winning shot last year in the first round yep. against Memphis. Redshirt sophomore who has been a big shot maker in his time on campus. And he'll check back out for Greenlee. Well, I think he's settled into his role because he trusts that he has a role. And there are times when guys. They come off the bench. They don't really buy into it as much because they feel like the role is insignificant. He's realized that his role matters, and he's confident and aggressive when he comes in. He's also been good defensively. Eight-point game, three-possession game. Edwards again, and Golden says, get that thing out of here into the cheer squad. The reality is that that was Brian Greenlee. Greenlee did such a good job on the ball that he forced a bad angle and allowed the secondary defender to take it away. If you give up a good angle drive, the secondary defender is usually the one who just contests the missed shot that gets rebounded and put back by the guy Vlad Golden was coming. And if you notice, Dusty may bring in Greenlee for Boyd after the free throws. That's why. 
That was kind of the point. That man knows a thing or two about coaching, doesn't he? That's why he signed a 10-year extension. Bugs is pushed by Martin. And that will send Bugs an excellent shooter to the line for two. You don't have a 10-year deal at ESPN? Uh, that's not information I'm allowed to talk about. <laughs> I know, we I don't. We don't disclose contract late here, John. No, I don't. It's between 0 and 10. How about that? There we go. John Bugs the Is third. it double zero? <laughs> it's between double zero and 10. That's correct. It's between triple zero and 10 even. I'll give you that. Now Boyd returns for Greenlee. A tough way to go out for Jones. And he has Mike played four years, but remember, anybody that played yeah. that first year uh, because it was still the post-COVID year, could he come back? Yes. Will he come back? Who knows? I don't think college basketball is going to settle in with the NIL and portal error until that extra COVID year is kind of done with. Yeah. Right. When I say done with, I just mean it's no longer a reality. Davis, what is this? Home run ball for Martin. Touchdown. And he got fouled by Another Nolan. football player. Yeah. And Nolan was recruited as a tight end, not a defensive back. Yeah, it's funny. We were talking to Dusty May at one of the games at, at, uh, at FAU. And, and one of the things we were talking about, I, I just kind of mentioned, I was like, I was watching Virginia Tech. And they don't miss layups. And Dusty's like, I kind of encourage tough shots and then trying different things. And that's a big piece of who they are, right? There's no right answer, right or wrong, to be honest, right? What he does is he encourages them to try to take ridiculous shots. Pretty much 80% of the shots you see John L. Davis take, they practice that. Up and unders, tough runners, and part of that is the free-flowing nature of who they are. John L. Davis doesn't think to throw that pass if he's a robot. He ain't a robot. He just makes the play. Martin hits the second. That extends the lead to three possessions. Brennan Lorient will check back in the game for Weatherspoon. Lorient playing with four fouls. Remember, Charlotte and Temple are just off stage here. Set to play our final quarterfinal. My first time seeing Charlotte in person. Mine too. Excited to see a team that was picked to finish 13th and finish third. What a story. Edwards floats it in. Five-point game. North Texas only with one timeout. Won't use it here. Inbound is to Greenlee, and he's fouled with 34.7. It's Edwards' second. Edwards is good, too. I, I mean, his ability to get where he wants. There are times in Edwards' game where he needs to learn how to slow down. And I don't mean slow down. I just mean downshift, right? Just kind of change speeds a little bit differently. He is so explosive. He can get where he wants. But is he getting there under control? That's kind of the next level to his game. But, man, guys that can get where they want are so disruptive when they're on offense. They just break down your defensive principles, force help. Golden's had to come over a lot. Greenlee only a 61% shooter, and he gets the friendly bounce. I mean, it, these, this is exactly like all of the other games that North Texas and FAU have played. Close, hard-fought games. Ryan Greenlee's first point of the day is just dropped through the rim. And he goes one for two, but Martin grabbed it, and then let's see, it's ruled out of bounds off of North Texas. Not a foul; it's an out of bounds call. Last touch by North Texas, and it will be reviewed. Yeah, I, hmm. interesting. I don't know how you overturn white basketball that plays under further review. Great job by Martin to throw himself into the play and maybe yeah. keep the possession for FAU. Or Texas. No, so you can still no, no. Quick 35 two. seconds left. Just attack. Get the best shot possible. Like, look, if you drive to the rim and somebody helps off of Bugs, then kick it out. Bugs shooting a three. I don't think John L. Davis is going to help. Scott's going to inbound to Nolan. Ooh. Careful there with a the step, C.J. Nolan. Nolan on Weatherspoon. Nolan lost the ball. Martin picks up the ball, and Elijah Martin is fouled. A costly turnover, and a foul puts Martin at the line for two with 24 seconds to go. And that one hurts. Is it? Good opportunity. Weatherspoon, good job sliding your feet, gapping a little bit. Then Elijah Martin just digging down, seeing that loose ball. 
Let's just say FAU, they were very, I thought they were very good to start the game defensively. I thought they were really, they leveled up to, to North Texas's level. But it may have slowed them a bit on the offensive end. They found it more in the second half offensively. I mean, look, this is not a game that's had a ton of rhythm and flow, considering what you just saw. This is the 52nd free throw coming up of the game. It's been about a two hour and 22 minute game right now. But FAU has grinded it out. We've had some Memphis games like that. Yeah, this is an average Memphis game. Martin goes one for two. Three possession game. Got to be a quick one here. Nolan All right. on target. All right. Timeout, North Texas. Charlotte and Temple hang back in the alley for a little longer there, kids. Yeah, no, 18 seconds. This is still a lot of time, man. I'm telling you, like, with North Texas as a build with him. I think across the conference, we've got really good coaches. Uh, that's one of the best signs. When, when co confer conferences have good coaches, you get good basketball. There's a statement of the night. Thank you. For that moment of Zen, FAU runs the four verts here. Oh, dangerous oh, pass goodness. knocked away by Walker. So a takeaway. Open. Edwards step back three. Edwards no rebound. Oh. Weatherspoon and he's fouled with oh. ten to go. Oh. It was in and out. A golden opportunity was halfway down Can, to do, cut it to one. Uh, John L. Davis right here, bottom of your screen, bottom right of your screen. John L. Davis is wide open. And he's just not seen. Oh, gosh. And that almost goes down. Wow. Man, this is just, it's never not interesting. This time of year. Fourth foul against Aaron Scott. Weatherspoon, 83% at the line this year. 25 out of 30. Has not scored today. Ooh. Until now, I was going to say, but what percentage is he when you're up four with ten seconds left to play? A hundred. Now you. Well, you asked me the question after he made it. Two possession game either way. This would mean you need threes. Weatherspoon hits it, so it has to be a quick three right now for North Texas. Inbound is to Edwards. He's the one you want to shoot it. Edwards takes it to the basket. That does nothing for you. He missed it. Boyd rebounds it. North Texas will not foul. And for the third time this year, Florida Atlantic escapes the mean green. And the teams on the bubble can breathe a little easier, at yeah. least for one night. FAU advances to the American semifinal.